Hi guys, it's Matt from Max on UK here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own bouncy ball in 3D. Okay, the 3D ball bounce is one of the most standard animations that you can kind of get to understand and practice how to animate, how to use keyframes, how to use interpolation, and how to get a realistic movement when it comes to using a ball and using keyframes and interpolation to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly set up a brand new scene to show you how I did it. Okay, so in a new file, I'm going to create myself a plane and that's going to act as my floor. And then I'm going to drag and drop another one, which I'm going to rotate really quickly to 90 degrees to act as my wall okay so there you go very quickly we have a floor and a wall in my other one i added a skirting board and that's done as such really fast i just added a cube obviously not that large um shrunk it in its height okay and then i turned on fillet expanded it out and then simply just moved it to the back so it was half out okay and there we go very quickly i have a very basic scene okay with my floor my floorboards so to add texture um, i used some of the presets in cinema 4d to save myself some time so under the content browser i simply searched for wood and there is a parquet flooring, I believe, somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so maybe one of the lighter ones. There we go. And I just drag and dropped that to the floor. I also did a quick wallpaper search and found, you know, some of the nicer wallpapers that there are. Just applied that in. Okay, I adjusted their projection to cubic so that they were a little less large, although I think that plane here needs to change a little bit. So say 150, Ooh. 250, yeah, it's a bit better, maybe 200. Cool, there we go. And as for the skirting board, just a simply nice white texture with a nice highlight to it and added that. And then just render quickly. Okay, we have some form of you know bump map on the floor there. Just gonna have a look at that. Okay, just invert it. Maybe I'll get rid of the bump altogether. Yeah, that's fine for me. Okay, it's just to give us the effect that there is something on the floor. Cool. So now what I need to do in order to do my ball bounce is I need a ball. So easiest thing to do, obviously, is to create a sphere. And then we need to scale it down so it fits within our scene. Okay, I'm not going to do a particularly large ball there. That will do. And just to give it a nice color okay i'm just going to go for red in this instance and maybe just increase its specular again so it's a kind of shinier ball maybe it's a bit rubbery so the light spills out a bit and i should just apply that to there and render and we have our bouncy ball okay i added daylight by giving myself a physical sky and that will always aid in giving a more realistic look but I just want to rotate it because I don't want the shadow to be in front of me okay I want to make sure that it's there so now if I render there we go that seats itself quite nicely okay and we've got the ball on the scene okay so now we need to keyframe so 90 frames is not going to be enough for me, um, but I should be able to do my animation in 150, which is not a problem. Okay, so with the sphere selected, 
To make my life easier when moving things up and down and not having to grab handles, I'm going to turn off the X and Z axis. That means that I can no longer move it in any direction other than the Y axis just by clicking. I can still grab the handles if I wanted, but in this instance I'm going to sit happily with that. So I'm just going to check what size that sphere is. I'm going to make it, say, 20. OK, so slightly above, because it means that my start position at 20 there means it will be touching without having to worry that it's gone below. But my animation will start above. OK, so I'm just going to put the ball above the scene where I can't see it and click keyframe. Boom. OK, and that gives me my keyframe. Then I'm going to say after about 20 frames, I'm going to move it down and I know that 20 is where it will sit and I shall click keyframe. And then I shall say about 18, 16 more frames, then I shall just move it up, say about halfway to where it was. Keyframe, say another 15 frames after that. Wonderfully put that back down to 20 into keyframe. And already we've got this bouncy movement. Some of this we are going to need to adjust. It's going to be a little bit by eye, okay, to start with. And then we are going to see how we get on. So we've got bounce, 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 okay. The movement at the moment looks very unrealistic, but that is what this tutorial is going to explore. It's going to go how to create much more realistic movement. In another one of my tutorials, I have looked at interpolation. I've looked at how to keyframe and I've looked at how to adjust interpolation. And that might be useful for you if you haven't already done that, but I will go through what that is in this sort of instance now. So, if I now press play, I'm just going to get rid of the physical sky to get rid of that mark in the middle. And I have my ball bounce there, which goes up and down. Okay, its positions are okay, but as you can see, the actual physical realness of that ball bounce is um, quite bad. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to adjust my layout, okay, and I'm going to go over to the animate layout which gives me this nice big timeline, which is gonna make my life an awful lot easier when it comes to changing the keyframes. So under the keyframes here, we are currently in dope sheet mode. I need to go to the F curve mode. And then if I click the sphere, it will activate. All of my keyframes are wonderfully off the screen. So I can use this button, the frame all to click and that will show my F curve, that will show my graph, definitely in this instance, my height time graph. When you use the manual keyframing, as I've done, it has recorded a variety of different information, and that includes the scale and rotation. As I haven't changed its scale or rotation, and I won't for this particular animation, I'm going to delete it, which leaves me only with the positions, so the X, Y, and Z, which to be honest, X won't change and the Z won't change. So the only thing I'm going to be adapting is the Y position. OK, it's up and down coordinates. Now, this graph shows that as Cinema 4D and most 3D programs always do, that it eases into movement and then eases out and eases in and then eases out up and down this graph. Now, that's lovely for most things, except when it comes for this particular exercise, which is a ball bounce because this implies that the ball slows down as it gets towards the ground, almost as if it decides that it no longer wishes to hit it. That is not going to be any use for us, and we are going to need it to hit it, or at least look like it's hitting it. And to do that, we are going to access the tangent handles of this interpolation line. Okay, And if I click it, you can see that I've got access to these two now. And if I move one, it moves the other. Now, that doesn't help me an awful lot when adapting the lower values, because if I did that and then scrubbed through my timeline, it would actually then go below, because that curvature goes below where that point is. So what I'm going to need to do, I'm going to need to break these tangents. And if I right click on my keyframe, we have break tangents, 
of which the shortcut is B, which I shall be utilizing for the others. So if I click break tangents, it changes the little tangent handles from triangles to circles. And it means that I can adjust these now. And I've got some control to separate those values. And you can see, there we go, because of where my timeline is, that if I adjust this line, it adjusts the position of that ball instantly on screen. And now if I just go back to the beginning and play that one bounce, there we go. Can you see the difference in that? It speeds up and then it hits it with such a force that it comes back up and then slows down. And now if I was to play the rest, you'd see just how unnatural the rest of it looks. So we start with a bounce and then it sort of wobbles up and down pretending it's not going to hit the ground. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust these, pressing B, and I'm going to need a shape that mimics that one. Okay, so that you get a nice curvature, so there's very little movement, but where it hits the ground, it's going to have a nice, uh, much sharper point that will give that feeling that the ball is bouncing. Okay, and then we're going to be able to see how this looks. So there you go, that was relatively fast in getting a realistic ball bounce, or hopefully, bounce. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, so it does its bounce. Okay, it looks like perhaps it could do with another couple of bounces. So maybe just two frames. I'm gonna grab my sphere and then I'm gonna move it up ever so slightly. Okay, and then I'm going to um, just keyframe its Y position that way. Rather than pressing the keyframe mode and creating all of its scale and rotations, I'm just going to put a keyframe in its Y track there to ensure that it works. And then two frames later, just lower that back down to 20 and keyframe again. I'm gonna to need to adjust its tangent handles on both sides. Okay, and if you want to, you can zoom in. Okay, so I'm just using my wheel mouse um, to do that so that I've got better access to those. There we go. Okay, and you can see where it does and doesn't adjust. Maybe you need to get that curvature looking nice. And the, the timeline has camera controls as you would expect um, most to have. You can control how far or whether that keyframe is in the middle if you want. So using these scales, Okay, I'm just going to, Ooh. okay, yeah, so there we go, you can see that there is that sort of bounce going on. I'm just going to scale that out, there we go. And if I frame it, it'll make life much easier. So now if I go back to the beginning, I'm just going to deselect the sphere so that I don't have the animation track on and press play. But doing Okay, it's imperative as an animator that you add sound effects to stuff. Um, you can see, there we go, and quite quickly, we have a rather realistic ball bounce that really gives that feeling of movement. It's a, it's a realistic ball bounce, but it's still quite simplistic. If you wanted to add much more realism, you'd need to go into things called squash and stretch, but that is going to be for another tutorial, okay? So what I can do, just quickly, I'm gonna make a preview render, okay, so you guys can see what that looks like. I'm gonna turn my physical sky back on, okay, and I'm just going to make a quick preview. Increase the size of that to say about 1200 so that we can see it slightly decently. I'm gonna click render, then I'm gonna speed up the process so that you guys don't have to watch me watch it waiting to render, and then I will see what it looks like in a second. Okay, there we go. So let's just have a quick play of that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it's just catching up with the frames there. We've got our little bouncy ball animation there. Much more realistic than it was to start with. Okay, once again, I hope that was a helpful animation for you that gives you an idea of how to get more realistic movement in your animations. And I will catch you next time.